Hi everyone. In the last video, we created data and domain layer for our auth module. And inside this domain module, we created login use case. And we will use this use case to perform login API call. And we also have this login view model. And in this video, we will see how we can use this login use case inside this login view model. So the first thing that we need is we need to add this domain module to our auth module. So I will change the view to project and here inside auth we have build.gradle.kts and here we will add this domain module as a dependency. So I will write here implementation projects.features.auth.domain and I will sync the project. Now I will open login view model and we have it inside this login package. And the first thing that I will do is I will make this view model as a health view model because in this project we are using health as dependency injection. So first I made this view model as a health view model with the help of this annotation. Now I need this login use case. So what I can do is I can provide it via constructor. So I will write here inject and then constructor and inside constructor I will provide login use case. So we have the login use case and you can see we have this icon here. That means we are getting the use case from here. So it is a constructor injection and we are already getting auth repository and user mapper that I shown you in the last video. So that's why Hilt is able to generate the instance of this login use case. And we are getting it here. Now we have the login use case and with the help of login use case, we can perform login. So here we will add one more event. So when the event type is, is login UI event dot login. In this case, we will perform the login. So I will create one more function here. So let's say we have function login and I will use a view model scope. Now when the user clicks login button, I will call login and inside login, I will perform the login. So first I will get the email and the password that I have in this login UI state. So I will get the email and the password from the state and I will call the use case. So we have login use case dot invoke and we have to pass email and password. So let's get it. So we have login UI state. It is actually UI state and inside UI state we have the value and inside value we have email and password. So for now we can directly pass it like this. So we have login UI state dot value dot email and login UI state dot value dot password. Let's run the application and see whether the API is getting called or not. But before that, we have to make sure that the API URL is correct in our project. And to do this, first open the app level build.gradle file. And here we have provided this URL. So what you can do is you can copy this IP and then you can open Postman and make sure your API project is running. In my case, it is running. So here inside postman, we have to paste the IP instead of this IP. So I will paste it here. And now I need to perform the API call from postman. Now you can see it is saying could not send request. That means this IP is not correct. And if it is the same with you, then you have to figure out the IP for your machine. And to do this, we have to open command prompt for windows and terminal for Mac users. So inside command prompt, we have to type this command ipconfig. And from here, we will get this ipv4 address. I have to copy this address and then I will paste it here. Now let's try sending the request again. And you can see this time it is working. So now I will put this IP in my build.gradle and then I will run the application. And I just realized that we need to do one more thing. This time we are using Hilt view model and not a normal view model. And we have a dependency for this view model. 
and if we go back to our auth nav graph then here we are providing the view model using this function view model and this time it will not work because this time we have a dependency for view model so what we have to do is we have to write hilt view model and that's it now run the application and let's see if the api is getting called or not so the application is running and bingo it crashed let's check the logcat what is the problem so it is an illegal state exception and it is related to health so i got the problem the first thing is we forget to annotate our activity with android entry point so when you are using health for injecting dependencies you have to annotate your fragment or activity with android entry point this is very important if you are using health for dependency injection or else your application will crash like this now the second thing is we have created this mini tails app class but we have not defined it inside our manifest file so open android manifest.xml and here define that class name mini tails app now it should work so let's run it again and you can see this time it is working so let's input some email and password i will just enter my email and password and i will open the logcat because we have not updated the ui so we will not see if anything happened or not so we will see the logs the api logs because we already defined the logger for our ktor http client so we should see the log when we hit the api so i will clear the logs and i will click this button and we see nothing so we have to fix another problem i think i have not written anything for button click so let's go to login screen we have the button here and we are doing nothing when we click the button so we have to make the login call so we will use this on event callback to perform the button click so here we will write on event dot invoke and we will pass login ui event dot login and now finally our application should work but wait we have to check one more thing we have to give internet permission in our android manifest file and we have not added internet permission yet so before trying again make sure you have added internet permission in your manifest file so i will add users permission and internet and because we are using http as it is our local host api we have to add one more property inside our application tag and it is users clear text traffic and we will set it to true so make sure you add these two things as well before running the application or else it will not work so let's run it again open logcat and i will enter the email and password so you can see it is still not working multiple tries i am clicking the button and nothing is happening i am not seeing any logs as an app developer we face these types of problems every time but instead of getting frustrated let's learn how to debug and how to find the problem so now what i will do is i will check if my function is getting called or not so first i will open login view model so this is my login view model and here i will set a breakpoint when i am calling the login function and then i will debug my application so you can see this is the button to run the application and this is the button to debug the application you can also attach debugger using this button if your application is already running but this time let's debug the application and then click on this login button so you can see our application is paused at this line so we can clearly see that this event is getting called and this function is also getting called so from here we will go to invoke 
and here we will see whether we are getting error or success. So let's continue the program. So we can click this button that is resume program. And you can see we are getting an error that is network result error. And here you can see the value of this error. So the error is serializer for class user login request is not found. Please make sure that class is marked as serializable. So now debugging is done. We got the problem. So we will stop the application. We will go to this user login request and we will mark it as serializable. And we can also write serial name that is email and to the password as well. Now let's run the application again and we hope that this time it should work. Let's do the same thing, open logcat, put email and password. Hit the login button and we are getting the logs. Bingo. So it was little frustrating but I hope you learned how to debug your application. It is very important for you. So you can see we are sending this request that is email and password and we are getting a success response. So I hope you found this video helpful and learned something. In case you have any problem, question or confusion, you can leave it in the comments below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.